Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today's edition, which constitutes a direct greeting to you, my friend Ivan, and whose purpose shall be to document pain. See, Ivan, a friend and fellow YouTuber, documented in his last video how very nicely Windows 10 is running on powerful MacBooks from 2019 and I would like to document the opposite how Windows 10 is running on netbooks and the result as you shall see will be as you guess painfully but I want you to see it for yourself so this is what today's video shall be about feel happy to skip ahead to whatever part might interest you so for this I have lined up a selection of netbooks that I have set up for certain children's experiments. And they all have Windows 10 installed and updated. And I shall just briefly note some peculiarities regarding that and also demonstrate in fact how it runs. The netbooks in question are a Lenovo IdeaPad S10-3 a Samsung N130, an EEPC 901, as well as an Acer Aspire 1, which, spoiler, spoiler, is clearly my favorite machine. They are all having quite similar characteristics, running varieties of the Intel Atom processor platform, the Lenovo having actually the fastest one of them, and it would be the best machine all over were it not for the absolutely terribly jumpy touchpad. And Atom processors, even at the time, were about a dozen times slower than the faster laptop processors available then. And nowadays, are several tens of times slower than any normal laptop processor. Did I say faster? I meant slower. Until Atom is of course optimized for resource use and not speed but I mean boy is it slow so our little theater is online very good and now let's start it up and see just in natural pain how long will that take the Lenovo the Samsung the EEPC and the Aspire one I need to press here F1 for some reason. The Lenovo has some little issue with the disc that didn't bother me enough to check more carefully. <coughs> yeah, the Lenovo does not start through till the end. I assume this must be a peculiarity of my particular machine. It just starts a bit, dies, and then on the second run starts normally. As you can see, the race for login <laughs> is right now between the Samsung and the Acer. It was a very interesting experience to install the Samsung. For now, it runs very nicely, the Samsung N130. But in the beginning, it ran as slow as molasses. It felt subjectively that it is going about twice as slow as even a netbook does. And I suspect that must have been some sort of driver issue. Speaking of driver issues, because we have a lot of time to talk until these things have booted up, the Samsung in particular started with a wrong resolution. It is the EEPC and the Asus, of which I had the feeling that they had the best default compatibility with Windows 10 as it came unupdated. But you do not need to worry about chasing down drivers for them. Hey, are you awake? <laughs> <coughs> for all of them, if you were to connect them to the internet and just wait long enough, are going in time to update properly. And everything, as far as I could 
see everything I bothered about, and in particular I didn't check exactly Bluetooth, because that I didn't care that much about, seems to be working. Sound, correct resolution, yeah, that's about it, that's about as much as I care. I don't even know whether they are having all accelerated graphics, but all of them look decent. As you can see, the Acer Aspire 1 is already online. I could imagine actually that the idea pad might overtake the others, given a second more, but let's see how things are running here. It has a somewhat faster processor. Well, those fast is not exactly a word you will much take into usage when speaking of the speed of these. So as you see, the Aspire 1 is already online, whereas the EEPC 901 is just getting into things. Lenovo, after its interrupted start, has begun to catch up. It is the only 64-bit of the bunch. All the others need 32-bit Windows 10. And here a little warning, if you, like me, just simply stick your 64-bit installation stick to them, having a little bit forgotten about that issue, right? Because what is not 64-bit nowadays? Well, most netbooks are not, because they're echoes from the 2010s. Then you will experience a startup screen which begins normally to install Windows, and then very quickly breaks down into something like vertical orange bars. And yeah, no help or notice that you are with the wrong bits, but just that. Orange bars and you don't know what's up. Okay, so now these two came up as well and the Samsung takes its sweet time. They have been installed the exactly same system, sort of, with exception of the idea pad, of course, because here I was taking 64-bit versions of programs as far as I could, and here I was keeping mostly with 32-bit programs. <coughs> well, slowly, slowly, they are <laughs> all coming up, and trust me, using them is... A bit of a challenge. So while we are waiting for the Samsung to get into the mood to join us, let us start WordPad. Okay, so a couple of tips perhaps how to set these up, minimize everything, I'm telling you that. We shall get into that in a second, but let me just check You see how slowly this reacts, like I typed WordPad and it was starting to search for it and then finally displayed it up here. They're all having the speech recognition module activated. That's part of the experiments I'm running on them. Okay, so I'm hovering over open here on the left on, of the Lenovo. Finally, the highlight followed the cursor. You can see everything us in slow motion so i'm tapping this for open and maybe nothing will happen so i'll click it again now here the shading changed and it accepted the command okay how fast are these gonna start word uh, word pad let's do the same thing here uh, so and let's do the same thing there while the search field is starting on the EEPC, I could actually click the search field on the ASUS. So here I'm typing also word pad. And yeah, I think no, it found it just in the internet. It did not yet find it in the system. The Asus found it in the system faster. I'm going to tap open. I really do mean WordPad, dear EEPC. -E I do not know why I'm not finding that. I'm gonna type the D again. Now it found it. I'm gonna go to open. 
I hope you took it. I'm gonna press it again. And then on the Samsung, which may have finally started more or less, I'm going to left click the search button. <coughs> That's painful, right? It does feel painful to use, trust me. Okay, the Samsung one is still waiting to start the Windows search field after I have left clicked. Ivan, what did I promise you? You showed the best basis in your view to run Windows 10 on, and I'm showing the worst. You cannot put a more modern Windows really on any of them, perhaps with exception of the idea pad, if you registry hack or something Windows 11 and force it to install. But on the maximum of two gigabyte of RAM, which the vast majority of these platforms support, this is gonna be a painful experience, even if you have a 64-bit processor. The others are not allowing it a priori because they are 32-bit and Windows 11 has no 32-bit edition. I'm gonna become an old man waiting for the Samsung. So I'll just commence the experiment with the other ones. And I think you understood why I actually like the Aspire one the most. I'm gonna try to type here text. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And we shall see how comfortable that is. So there we go. I'm gonna do it caps locked so you can have a chance of seeing it from the distance. So here the typing speed is in so far acceptable as I do not sense any great delay between me typing and the letters appearing. I know you're thinking this is absurd, but this does actually have a tendency to happen on Microsoft Word on netbooks. So let's try the same thing here. Here it happens evidently. I think I shall put you a little closer so you see just how painful this is going. Okay, let's zoom you in and you will see how I'm actually typing faster than the netbook is going to be showing it. The quick brown fox jumped over and now it caught up now it is no longer doing this so whatever happened in memory it now sped up again okay this is good we are still not having the search field here i'll click it again now it appeared great okay now let's look for wordpad There seem to be clearly some sort of caging effects all over the place and you can actually feel them. How's that for slow startup? I mean, this is WordPad. <laughs> Imagine here anything like Photoshop. Okay, caps locking. The quick, eh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So they are catching up with that. I mean, I can do it for the sake of completeness also on the Aspire one, but I think the effect will be similar. No, this time it did not offer me this ridiculous delay due to caging issues, but had it immediately online, I'm not going to type further. 
All right, so we can say that that worked pretty nicely, right? Let's try the same thing in Microsoft Word, for I have the suspicion that there the effect might be more pronounced. It typically is. Okay, closing this down. Let's also see how long is actual Word going to take, not just Word Pad. Double clicked Winward Exa shortcut. Nothing is happening. Gonna double click it again, maybe. Ah, little circle started. And we are waiting and waiting and waiting. And I believe. I might try the same also on another machine. Okay, Word has started to appear. This is our fastest netbook. Everything else is going to be slower blank document <clears throat> yeah yeah here okay and now let us try to type here anything so it is slightly jumpy but i must say in practice usable so one could actually say set up as it is, this is going to be finally a usable machine. And while not speedy, if you're patient, you would be able to perform office tasks on it. I'm going to say now, don't save. <coughs> Let us attempt the same feat over here on the EEPC 901 or even on the Samsung maybe. Yeah, let's try the Samsung. You realize there's a clear difference in the color temperature. By natural setup, I did not modify that in any significant way. The Samsung's color is somewhat colder than the EEPC's, which really has the warmest color of them all. So, if I say now on the Samsung Word, here I have installed an older version of Word in all fairness. Let's not make it so big. Also because it's a 32-bit platform and not so new word that is word 2016 on that platform is simply running better do not think to run any netbook on windows 10 on one gigabyte of ram i tried it is so painful it will be unbearable two gigabyte are the least so here we have started word and may maximize it you see you sort of see how it draws the windows. I am now going to try this out. Well, that's an interesting experience. The first time I tried it on this particular netbook, it was going so slow that it was basically one sentence behind me typing. It has apparently sped up though, through whatever effect. So Windows is working. Okay, that's all great and nice and cool. <laughs> and we can say that you can use Windows and Office with a little bit of patience for such tasks. Perhaps now we might have a look at the setup of these little beasts and what exactly one might wish to do in order to speed things up a little. I think this I might show you best here, so that the details might be a little better visible. 
Now, first of all, you're having here the taskbar, which when you right click it, after a fresh install of Windows 10, this is going to be blinking like a Christmas tree. And it is going to be extremely unnerving to use. One of the things you might do is to go after you right click it here and unclick everything and change the search box to the search icon. So this is no longer going to be a box over here, but it's going to be an icon. And if you in particular unclick these search highlights, you will no longer see these little pictures in the search box, should you decide to keep that instead, which I wouldn't recommend, but still. And these little icons seem to be drawing a lot of power during startup, like the whole thing is really slow. Furthermore, you're having here in the taskbar settings, and you see how long it takes, like I clicked it, and now we wait, and everything is like that. Did I do anything wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's just slow to start. Okay. And we wait, and that happens. That happens a lot. Okay. And then you're going down there. There are going to be a couple of default things up there. They, they don't bother us that much. And here, the news and interests on the start bar. I definitely recommend you to goodbye these. Okay, having removed the news and interests, the other idea would be to minimize a couple of the buttons that you're getting all the time. So there you're having this turn system icons on or off. Once you click that, you will see some of those things, some of those pests which are taking start up energy and you should remove those which you believe you will not need. In particular, I catapulted the meet now part. What do you want to show me about meet now? And really the touchpad and some other things. The Windows Ink workspace, some of them are by default off. And the other thing which is quite annoying and which I also yeeted was the action center. So that about the taskbar. Now, as you see, when I'm moving around Windows, I'm just having here a hollow, a hollow figure and just the outline of the window is moving, but I'm not displaying the contents. Now, that is another performance setting you might do. I'm doing that actually on every version of Windows so far since XP, because that's where I discovered it. <laughs> when, no, it was not Windows, it was performance options. Uh, let us look for performance. No, it's not the performance op monitor. Performance options. It's just web results. Yeah, adjust the performance of Windows. Yes, adjust the appearance and performance of Windows in the control panel. That's exactly the one we are searching. So then we're clicking open. And there, I hope you see this. Normally you're having adjust for best appearance or let Windows choose what's best for my computer. I've seen both defaults. By a fresh installation it will be the first one. Let Windows choose. Some manufacturers are setting it to look cuter. This is all very slow and you can simply say adjust for best performance or custom and make sure that either all the boxes are ticked off enabling nothing or you might also decide to at least keep one on which is smooth edges of screen fonts 
if you insist on the fonts of Windows looking a notch better. They're not gonna be beautiful anyway <laughs> if the monitor has a terrible resolution but it may or may not be preferable to you one or the other way. So I'm going to turn that off and the next thing we're going to be doing is moving this to the side and do one final painful experiment. Yeah. Uh, minimize the screen. Is this possible? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you see again the whole cluster of inmates. Very good. Let's open Microsoft Edge and let us browse the site of the BBC. Starting Edge here, starting Edge on the Samsung, starting Edge on the EEE PC, and starting Edge on the Acer Aspire 1. What are we? Browsers! <laughs> <coughs> Like, for a moment I was not even sure did these pick up that I wanted this browser to start. So we are on already now on three of the four netbooks. Not even sure that the 901 that the EEPC 901 even caught it. It is showing something, some sort of movement. Double clicking it again, it starts again to rotate. Okay, I'm going to type out bbc.com and press enter on the Lenovo. bbc.com on the Samsung N130. BBC dot com on the art acer aspire one and no don't translate anything like, why would you want to translate anything i think here opera gx has changed the default browser very funny Yes, yeah, set as default. <clears throat> and slowly we are navigating through the wide seas of the internet towards the site of the BBC. With exception of the EEPC 901, which is not navigating anywhere, it's just trying to start up stuff. Do I agree to cookies? Yes, I agree. What is happening on the idea pad? Why does the BBC side look so weird? The page isn't responding. I'm just gonna wait, thank you. I know it's there. Ha, ah, we're getting the same page as over here. We're finally getting on the Aspire 1, which was entertainingly the last netbook to visit anything. I am going to be agreeing to the cookies. And we are having the same weird page over here with things somehow being shown as if these are the 90s, like the links are truly spelled out in the strangest fashion, like this.
I mean, wow, is this slow. So I managed to visit the BBC there. Here, we're still getting the page isn't responding and I'm going to again say, wait on the Samsung. And finally, I'm going to go to bbc.com on the EEE PC 901 and see how things are going there. Okay, uh, I will not torture you much longer with these two because they have displayed some form of the page. I mean, I might go to a German newspaper, for instance. I might go to spiegel.de. on both machines. Whoever has not loaded yet his web page shall not participate. Why exactly am I not connected? It knows username and password for the network and it should be connecting to it by default. So maybe the Samsung did not really get internet and maybe it's not slow maybe it's just disconnected but we are at the spiegel already on the idea pad s10 finally after what seems like a century we're getting the weird bbc site i am going to connect and this saying connect automatically to my home network like seriously And we're getting a normal web page here, consent and continue with advertising on Spiegel. So here we are having that. Here, the EEPC 901 already reached the BBC. Let's make it reach Spiegel.de. and translate to English, never translate anything, never translate German. Okay, for some reason, the browser looks terrible, also on Spiegel, again, these 90s style links, but now we're having a normal web page on the second loading. Ah, I should handle here my URL, I mistyped it, I'm going to Try it again. All right. The Acer Aspire one has finished the race to the BBC as well. Now the EEPC 901 did it. Although I'm slightly entertained that what I see is not the exact same page. Like here there, there is an article on the Israel-Gaza war, which is the same on the Acer Aspire 1. However, the EEPC 901 is showing something about the German parliament as, as a first article. I think though that the page may have changed. And we're still waiting for the Samsung to be so good and open the BBC. What are we? Browsers. Yeah, and while we wait and wait and wait i think i want to wait no longer i'm just going to close down 
the browsers again for those who have reached things and possibly show you a couple of the programs I have installed and which you might find useful as well for operating a netbook on Windows 10. Now, the fastest browser, even though of course it is looking strange, is Lynx, which is normally a command line browser well known in the Linux world. But in Windows it is sort of the only possibly bearable version on a machine that slow. So I have double clicked it, we're waiting for it. While we are waiting, the Samsung N130 has not yet reached the BBC. And links, really, I want that you start pressing enter again. Yeah, now you do it twice, right? Okay, so you greet it with this gray window. And if you now press G for go, you're getting this go to URL thing. And there I could say, for instance, um, well, le monde dot fr. And as you can see, while this is not showing it in the most beautiful fashion, the connection is a lot more immediate and you can scroll down and read articles pretty nicely and normally and it does not take forever. So if I go to Voyage and click it, it works momentarily. So that is what you could be using as a browser. If you press escape, you access its menu. You can press then enter to enter a menu or arrow keys to navigate. And then I'll finally say exit to leave links. But that is truly your only viable browser option, unless you want to use some other browser, just like here on the Samsung when you as I moved it, perhaps saw that we finally reached the web page of the BBC. So in reality, if you want to use a more complex browser, it's more like this. You enter a web page, let it surf towards it and go make yourself a cup of coffee. Yeah, that regarding the browser and some other entities you might wish to be having is, for instance, I mean, this is just a matter of personal preference and Everybody will have his own thing, but I like to have here FL Digi for the for certain ham facts and and other experiments. Uh, there's HXD, a nice text editor. There's DOSBox X, opening to us the world of DOS on this netbook, which is not to be underestimated given its speed. Links, as I mentioned, the GNU Midnight Commander Notepad Plus Plus Putty, actually perhaps my main tool on this experimental type of machine in order to do all sorts of connections. GNU Prolog, a logical programming language. SFK Shell, now that's something like BusyBox for Windows. Sumatra PDF as a PDF reader is actually quite fast. Word Grinder as a really, really fancy creation of a sort of command line word processor. I believe by David Given, who is an absolute genius doing all sorts of such things. Then there's Yori which is sort of like more beautiful command.com but with the disadvantage that it apparently does not navigate to direct directories with an asterisk. I'll show you in a minute. The VLC media player Audacity for sound editing. The Tor browser which is really really painfully slow. The Lynx web browser which is really the same thing as the as the other Lynx. They're having a similar name. The one is just like the like big bobcat. Only the Bobcat thing is harder to install, so that's why I'm not recommending it to you. Open Stego for steganography experiments. The transmission torrent client, in case, of course, you want to pull down a Linux DVD. 
the Arduino suit paint because one occasionally needs paint and I really don't like searching for it down there which takes for an eternity and MMSS TV which is a really nice slow scan television application so yeah that's really about it I might show you Yori for a second because I really like that it brings back one of the most enjoyable features of the windows of the 90s namely the ability to run a text editor on the command line by default like without bothering much installing anything and i'm not talking of some sort of windows version of vi or emacs i'm just talking of something which very much looks like that Hello from Yori. So that is a computer, right? It's not exactly added. It is a, you know, own replication of it. But it is truly, like you see it a bit on the dialog boxes, but it is truly feeling nice to use. What it cannot do is to say CD Doku and then asterisk it cannot look at the path whereas if i say cmd for the windows command interpreter if i say cd doku and an asterisk it can do it so that's like the only little disadvantage it is in fact having it's like more typing but other than that it's a very decent program and this really concludes today's netbook review I leave it to you whether you are masochistic enough to run Windows 10 on netbooks, but I believe you got a clear impression of what that would look like. From me, that's it for today. Thanks for having joined. Hope you enjoyed the episode and subscribe if you wish to see further. Until our next adventure, have a wonderful time and from me, goodbye.